Welcome back, Jam Play. I'm Mark Brennan. It's good to be back with you on my basic electric guitar series. Uh, it's been a little while since we've done some filming, so I'm real excited to get back at it with you. We're going to build off our C major notes in the first position in C major. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at some chords. Uh, we're going to we're going to look at the chords that are built around the C major scale, so chords that are in the key of C major. Um, I'm going to break that up into two lessons for you. Uh, it's going to involve um, several chords. And then what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll start looking at some uh, basic power chord stuff for you. And uh, then later on we'll get into E minor pentatonic scale. So, uh, like I said, glad to be back with you. Uh, go ahead and grab your guitar, get it tuned up, grab your metronome, and we'll get started. Okay, chords in C major. Now we're going to start your real basic here. We're going to build off the C major scale that we learned in the previous lessons. And uh, we're going to learn the easy C, which is four string chord, just two fingers. And then we're going to learn the easy G7, which is really easy, one finger, and the easy G. Okay, now we'll get to the full forms of this in, uh, in the next lesson. But just want to get you acclimated to playing chords on your guitar. Okay, now hopefully you, um, you've got your right hand control in pretty good shape. If you want to go back and review the right hand uh, technique lesson that I uh, posted, uh, it, uh, it's real good on learning how to control the strumming of different groups of strings and the number of strings that you strum. So you want to be able to just be able to strum a group of three strings or a group of four strings. Okay, okay. so we'll start with the C chord. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll start with the note C on the second string first fret. Okay, now we talked about our left hand position. Real important here. You gotta be careful not to bump adjacent strings, okay? Like if, if my hands rolled back the slightest bit, I'm gonna be bumping that top E string. So I want to make sure that I'm getting clearance on the E string and then I'm going to strum the top three strings. Okay, now you want to get those nice and clean. Okay, don't forget about your right hand uh, as far as relaxing. Okay, we talked about that in the right hand lesson. We talked about uh, keeping the forearm and the hand and the grip of your pick as relaxed as possible. You don't want to be gripping the pick real tight. Okay, so we want to be nice and relaxed and stroke it like a paintbrush, like the stroke of a paintbrush. Real relaxed, real smooth. You know, you can, you, you can vary the, the speed of your stroke to get like a flared sound, okay? Or you can have a real quick stroke to where the three notes basically sound at the same time. That's basically what we're going to try to do right now, is we're just trying to get a nice smooth strum where we're strumming all, all the strings together with one stroke. Okay? All right, so if you got the three strings going, then let's add our second finger. Okay? Now we're going to get it on the E note, second fret, fourth string. Got to make sure you have clearance on the third string. Got to be careful of this. Get it nice and clean right up on the tips of your fingers. Okay? And then strum four strings now. Okay, a little, little quicker stroke. Okay, so we have all four strings nice and clean. Nice, beautiful four string C chord. Okay, all right. Now we'll move on to the G7. Okay, real easy. All you need is the index on the top string, first fret, and we're going to strum four strings again. The four, third, and second strings are open. Okay, now that really shouldn't be any problem, but don't uh, don't get in the bad habit of, of losing your hand position just because you're only putting one finger down on the top string. Keep your hand curved, thumb straight, right up on the tip of the finger. Okay, should be nice and relaxed. All four chord tones ringing nice and clearly. Okay, now let's go to the easy G chord. Okay. Okay, third fret, top string, the G note with the third finger. Okay, now later when we, when we learn the full G, we'll be playing that with our pinky. 
okay? But for now, we'll just use our ring finger. To make it nice and easy, we're right in the position, right on the third fret. Okay, so uh, those are the first three chords in the, uh, the supplemental material. Now, if we drop down, we can, um, I have a chord progression you can practice with. Now, I'm going to practice these at about 85, okay? Don't be afraid to go slower, okay? But I got my, uh, my Boss DB30 here, and I won't use the metronome for the whole lesson, but just to give you an idea how to, how to work with the metronome with this. Um, now, what I have here are whole notes. So strum each chord once, hold it for four counts. And C, now move to the G7, now prepare your third finger for the G, back to the G7, and then the C. Okay, now we'll repeat it. The G7, again we're playing whole note strums, keep everything relaxed. Now, we're going to move on to half notes. Okay, all down strokes. Keep your strumming hand nice and relaxed. There's our G. Now back to the C. Okay, we'll repeat that. We got the C, the G7, the G, and then the C. Okay, now we'll move on to quarter notes. Now again, if this is too fast for you, slow it down to maybe like 80. Okay, so we're doing a, a quarter note down strum. And with a whole strum. Two, three. Now we'll repeat. Okay, everything should feel real relaxed. Keep with the metronome. Find the groove of the metronome. Okay. All right, so there's your easy C, easy G7, and easy G. Uh, practice those simple strumming patterns to get the feel of changing from chord to chord. The most challenging part that I find students encounter when they're learning chords is moving smoothly from, from chord to chord. Now these chords are simple enough that you can probably easily get into the groove of keeping your rhythm from chord to chord. So many students will pause at a chord change. And you have to kind of nip that in the bud. You have to learn how to play with good rhythm. Now, you might not be able to get the chord change right in rhythm, but it's important to try to keep your hand moving to the rhythm and let your left hand catch up. You know, if you clunk the first chord, that's okay. I suggest the students to establish good rhythm right off the bat. Find a metronome tempo that's comfortable for you. Uh, again, I demonstrated this at 85. Try 80 or even slower. And those three chords should get you going, learning how to strum with good rhythm, changing chords smoothly. Okay, so we'll break here, and we'll get a little more challenging. We'll, we'll come back with the E minor and the A minor. Okay, we're back with chords in C major. Now we're going we're gonna to take a crack at the E minor and the A minor chords. Now, the thing I love about these chords Showing, showing it to students is they get a chance to get the full resonance of the guitar with a full sounding chord with the bass notes. And they're not really difficult to get going on either. Okay, so we're going to do the E minor. Okay, now this has the root on the low sixth string. Okay, so this is a root six chord. You'll hear me talking about the roots of chords quite a bit when I talk of uh, chords and, and chord progressions and where to strum from, okay? So my basic rule of thumb is you want to strum the chord from the root of the chord. Okay, now the exception was the easy C, easy G7, and easy G. We didn't have the complete chords. But the C minor is a full six string chord, so we want to strum all six strings. You're, you will strum from the low six string with this. So root six, E is the root of the chord. Okay. Um, all right, so we have this 2-3 fingering configuration, which is pretty easy to get a grip on. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my second finger on the second fret of the fifth string. Now, since I need to make room for my third finger, I'm going to bring it down a little bit, like maybe 
more toward the middle of the fret. As long as you get good contact on the string, you're, you're still going to make good contact on the fret wire. You won't get any buzzing. That way you can get the third finger on the second fret of the fourth string. Okay, be careful not to go up too high with it. You don't want the third finger going over the fret. You want to have the third finger right next to the fret. And you scoot the second finger up as high as you can get it. And you'll still get, as long as you have enough pressure with your second finger, you won't get any rattling. Okay. And then uh, make sure that you have clearance on the third string uh, with your ring finger. And then with a nice smooth stroke, all six. Now if your guitar is in tune and it's set up right and you have a nice tone, that should really sound beautiful to you. Okay? All right, so there's your E minor. Um, Got a nice easy chord, all six strings. Now what we'll do is we'll check out the A minor chord now. Now, you're going to hear me refer to a lot of different left hand moves with chord changes. And this one involves what I call a lock and shift move. Okay, now basically a lock and shift move is a group of fingers, either two, three, or four fingers, will stay in the same formation, but they'll move to a different group of strings. Okay, so when I move to the A minor chord, I'm going to pick up my 2-3 configuration. I'm not going to try to do this and put them down separately. I want to lock them in and bring them down on the 4th and 3rd strings. Same setup. Okay. Now after I do this, or as I do this, I should say, I'm going to bring my index down on the 1st fret of the 2nd string. Okay. So it has this triangular configuration with your index, middle, and ring finger. Okay, might feel a little odd at first, but once you practice it and you work with it a lot, it begins to feel real comfortable. You can kind of reference this to your easy C chord, where you already had your index and middle finger down, but now what we're doing is we're just bringing in our third finger, and then we have this triangular configuration. Now the A minor is a root 5 chord. So if you look at the fretboard diagram on your supplemental material with the A minor, the, the X is over the low 6 string. Don't hit the low 6 string. We strum from the 5th string. So it's a root 5 chord. A minor, root is the open A, A minor. Okay, so you want to use the E minor and A minor as a chord pair. Practice going back and forth. Okay, again, most students will start out one finger at a time, okay, because they're just not used to working with groups of fingers moving together. But you want to start to get the feel of this lock and shift with two and three, okay? And then what you do is you just bring your index in at the same time. Now, I see a lot of students, they'll do that, and then they'll bring the index in, okay? You got to try to control your fingers where they work as, as a unit. Try to bring the index down with the 2-3, okay? Okay, now as we did before, we started with whole note strums, okay? I'll do this nice and slow for you. Right? Um, one, two, three, four. Okay, we'll do two E minors and then make the move to A minor. to E minor, we lock and shift 2 and 3, okay, now to A minor, we lock and shift 2 and 3 and bring the index down. Again, keep everything as relaxed as possible. Okay, now move on to half notes. 2, 3, 4, okay. And then let's move on to quarter note strums. Don't tense up your right hand. Now the music has it repeating back to the whole notes. Okay, so that's how we'll do all these chord pairs in the next two lessons. Or, I mean, this lesson and the following lesson, where we'll get a chord pair going, practice it with whole note strums, then move on to half note strums,
and then quarter note strums. That'll be pretty much the consistent way we'll, we'll work on these chords. So you're just getting the feel of moving from one chord to the next, okay? And then later on we'll have other chord progressions that'll involve several different chords in a progression, okay? Okay, so there's your E minor and A minor. Let's take a break. Uh, we're going to move on to two even more challenging chords for you. We're going to check out the D minor and the F chord. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back with chords in C major. Hope you're enjoying the lesson. Uh, it's getting progressively challenging here for you. The next two chords we're going to try um, proved to be a little, little more difficult than the previous ones. We're going to learn the F chord, the infamous F chord. But it's a beautiful chord and everybody's got to cut their teeth on the F chord sooner or later. <laughs> so might as well do it now, huh? Since we're in the key of C major. And then the D minor, which proves to be kind of awkward to a lot of students at first, too. Okay, so I want to show you the D minor first, okay, because we have a fingering configuration that we're already familiar with. In the C chord and the A minor, we had the, the one two angle. I'm going to refer to this as. Okay, so it's the index and the, the middle finger uh, one fret apart in an angle configuration with a string in between. Now, Let's pick up that one two angle, see if you can lock and shift that and put it on the first and third strings like that. Okay. Now this will set us up for the D minor chord. Okay, now I teach students to play the D minor chord with the pinky and not the third finger. You'll see a lot of people playing the D minor with their third finger, and that's fine. You know, I'm not saying that that's a bad way to do it, but to me, at least for my hand, it's more comfortable with the pinky and it will give you a chance to start using your pinky, okay? A lot of people neglect the pinky uh, when they're first starting to learn the guitar because they really don't need to use it a lot, okay? So we're going to use it on the D minor. The big advantage to doing it like this for me is having the third finger out over the fretboard. So it's hovering over the fretboard, ready for the next chord or the next move that you're going to make after you play the D minor chord. Okay, now the D minor is a root four chord. Okay, so you want to stay off the low E and A strings. We, wish, we just want to strum this from the fourth string. Okay. Um, again, a lot of people have trouble getting the pinky down, especially after they add the uh, index and middle finger. When they get that down first, getting the pinky down at the same time might take a little bit of practice. Okay, so again, try to, as quick as you can, get away from the one finger at a time method of laying a chord out. Try to, try to actually form the chord with your fingers and get all fingers down at the same time. When you're moving from a C or an A minor chord, you're going to have the, you're going to have the help of the one, two angle move, the lock and shift with the one, two angle. And then if your hand position's good and you're hovering your pinky, over the fretboard, it's really right over the note. Okay, don't don't have your pinky curled back or tucked under the neck like this. Um, you see people sometimes do that when they're learning to play. Keep the pinky hovering over the fretboard so when you make the move to the D minor, you can get it right down there with the one two angle. Okay, and again, top four strings, nice smooth strum. Try to avoid bumping strings. Keep on the tips of your fingers. All four chord tones nice and clean. Okay, now let's move on to the F. This is always a challenge. Uh, I'm going to show you two different ways to learn how to play the F chord. Okay, uh, for some people, one method works better than for others. But I think a good way to try to start to do it is to get these three fingers down first. Okay, now this is a straight angle with your index, middle, and ring finger on the second, third, and fourth strings. Okay, so we're playing the C with our index the A with our middle finger, and the F with our ring finger, okay? Now you might want to try to play just those three notes, and that's really your first F chord. But the problem is we need to learn how to do a bar. Okay, so what is a bar? A bar is a method of pressing two strings down, or two, three, four, five, or six strings with one finger, usually your index finger. So this is a two-string bar. 
that I have with my index. Okay. Now, when I show people how to play the F chord, I try to get them to straighten out this knuckle. Okay. Instead of curling it back like that or keeping that knuckle curved and trying to press two strings down with the, with the tip of your finger. You really have, you have to get off the tip a little bit and straighten your finger out and you bar or press down two strings with one finger and I'm trying to keep this joint in my knuckle straight. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the ring, middle, and index finger down again. And then I'm going to try to straighten out that knuckle to get a good clean bar. And there you have it. Now a lot of people um, have a difficult time doing this. I see a lot of people where they can get away with like rolling over on the side of their finger like that while keeping the knuckle bent. That's cool. Okay, so see I'm rolling on the side of my index a little bit. I've kind of gotten into the into the habit of playing my F chord by straightening my index like that. Okay. So what we did was we got this part of the chord down and then we're going to try to manipulate our index finger to get a bar going whether you flatten the knuckle out or you roll on the side of your index like that. Okay. Um, be patient with yourself. Keep working on it a little bit every day. Uh, most people will end up, they just can't get that top note down real clean because they can't manipulate their finger into a bar. And that's, that's hard to do. It takes a little bit of work and practice and patience. Okay, now the other way that I can show a student, and it works, this works pretty good, is getting the bar down first. Most people can do that. Okay, most people can press those two strings down and get a good bar down and get those clean. But it, it starts to be, get to be a problem when they start to get the other two fingers down. So you might want to try to get the bar down and then just get the middle finger down and you have your three string F chord. Okay, and then eventually again with good hand position and you're stretching out the ring finger to get up to the fret, then you have it. Okay, okay now um, on the supplemental material I have a, a D minor to F chord pair that you can try. Now this will be kind of a challenge. We're going to move from the D minor to the F chord. So I do have the luxury of a pivot finger. Okay, now what's a pivot finger, Mark? Okay, pivot finger is a, when you make a move to another chord, you have one finger that is going to stay down in the same spot. So everything else kind of pivots off of it. Okay, so in this case, my pivot finger is my middle finger. And then I make the move to the F. Okay, and when I go back to the D minor, my pinky's hovering right over the note. I pick the bar up, lift three, get on the tips of my index and pinky, and we're back to the D minor, and then to the F. Okay, so practice this the same way we were working before. Start with whole notes, about 80 or 85 on the metronome, back and forth, and then strum half notes. Can you keep your tempo steady? And I'm working without a metronome right now, but I can keep it steady. And then move the quarter note strums all down. Again, keep the right hand relaxed. And then D minor. Okay. So don't get discouraged. Be patient. Uh, work on it a little bit every day. Everybody comes around. Everybody learns these chords eventually. Okay. So just keep at it. Um, and we'll stop here. And uh, we're going to look at a, a, a series of chord pairs that I have uh, in the supplemental material where we'll tie together all these different chords into chord pairs. Okay. So be right back. Okay, welcome back. We're doing chords in C major here. Hopefully uh, everything's going okay for you. Um, some of the chords are a challenge, but uh, hopefully at this point uh, you at least got them under your fingers where we can uh, present a bunch of different chord pairs for you to practice. Okay, uh, looking at the supplemental page here, page two, um, I've laid out uh, a series of chord pairs for you to practice. Now again, they're all in whole notes, but you know, 
do it the method I, I showed you where you start with whole notes drums then on the repeat of the four bars you do half notes drums and then you do quarter notes drums okay keep your tempo steady use the metronome slow it down if you have to you know again I'm, I'm doing things around 80 85 okay you might want to try it a little slower and uh, work each chord pair a little bit every day okay so um, first one I have laid out here is the four string C chord your easy C chord to the F okay now that move has a pivot finger well sort of a pivot finger your index is going to stay where it's at and then you're going to lay out the bar to the F chord you get two three down then you lift your ring finger get back up on the tips make sure your open strings are nice and clean okay so there's C to F again the F chord is going to be a challenge but once you get it under your finger this move from C to F shouldn't be too bad the four string C okay next one is C to D minor okay now we talked about the one two angle okay when you move from C to D minor you lock and shift your one two angle drop the pinky in okay let's try half notes what do you think nice and smooth your tone should be real clean you don't want to put a lot of oomph on your stroke. Your, your stroke should be nice and relaxed, kind of like stroking a paintbrush. If you want more volume, then just a little more wrist snap. Or just crank it up. You're playing an electric guitar. Okay? These chords sound pretty cool with a little crunch, too. Depending on the, the song or the setting or the sound you're going for. Of course, I'm playing them nice and clean here. some quarter notes again C to D minor just giving you a demonstration and then you can always end on the chord that you started with okay all right things are sounding cool you know working the guitar getting some harmony going next one is D minor to G okay now again we're gonna play the easy G chord with our ring finger okay so the move from D minor to G you have your ring finger hovering over the fretboard so when you make the move just drop the ring finger in. now try to hover that one two angle a little bit like that going back to D minor okay I'm thinking ahead a little bit I want to be able to get my hand in position to make the move back to D minor okay getting the pinky in is a real common problem I see with students getting the pinky down nice and clean Again, I'm hovering it, dropping it in with rhythm. Okay? All right. Now let's try E minor to F. Okay? Now, different groups of strings that you have to strum. E minor is all six, right? Root six chord. Okay, now the F chord is root four. Now this is kind of tricky because you have no lock and shift or pivot moves with your left hand you have to really much pretty much shape that chord and lay it down E minor to F now we do have a glide finger move okay let me explain that real quick I just noticed we have a glide finger okay third finger is on the second fret of the fourth string when you move to F you're going to glide it up to the third fret and then lay the rest of the F down back to E minor you glide it back down so a glide finger stays on the same string but moves to a different fret okay you don't want to pick it up and refret it you want to kind of lift the pressure smoothly glide it up right along the same string okay so I'm going to glide three up lay the bar out drop the F in now you, you might notice that you're going to get open strings ringing like I, I still hear my low E ringing don't be really all concerned about that if it, if it really is annoying to you 
then do a little damp with the side of your thumb to dampen the low E string. Okay, so there's E minor to F. Now let's try A minor to F. Okay, um, we, we can pivot off the index, lay the bar out, just like we did from the C to the F. This is A minor to F. Again, now different groups of strings. A minor is a five string chord, root five. The, the F chord is a four string chord, root four. So you have to be able to move from four, string, four strings to five strings. Okay, now let's move on to G to E minor. Okay, now we've been doing the G with our ring finger. Okay, that's cool. But I think what I might try is to play the G with my pinky here. Give my pinky a little more work. All right, this is going to set me up for my full G chord, which we'll learn in the next lesson. Okay, I'm hovering two and three. They're pretty much shaped and ready to go right under the E minor. Okay, and E minor. Okay, next one is F to G. Okay, now again, I might want to use my pinky because it's hovering right over the G note. And then it gives me the opportunity to shape the F chord. And it gives me more opportunity to work my pinky. And then that'll set me up for my full G chord in the next lesson. Nice and smooth. Okay, again, we're doing these all in whole notes. Okay, one more. We've already done this, though. The D minor to F. Now, again, we talked about the pivot finger with the middle string to the F chord. And then, and then D minor. Okay, so... Um, I think that's a pretty good group of chord pairs for you to practice. It kind of gets every possible combination going. Okay. All right. So uh, let's stop uh, and uh, we'll take a break and I'll wrap up the lesson and uh, we'll look ahead. Thanks. Okay. Welcome back. I'm Mark Brennan and you're on jamplay.com. Hope you've enjoyed the chords in C major lesson. Um, don't be intimidated by all the chords. Uh, I just wanted to present them all to you. Um, we talked about uh, doing them in chord pairs, strumming them whole notes, half notes, and quarter notes. And think about the different moves, the, the lock and shift, the pivot fingers, and the glide fingers to help you move from chord to chord. Okay, Work it with a metronome. Keep your, keep your tempo nice and steady. Try to get these chord pairs going in rhythm. Okay, Again, it's real common for a student to stop from chord change to chord change until they get a feel of it, but really, um, right off the bat, work for good rhythm. That's the most important thing. Even if you clunk the first chord on a chord change, keep your hand strumming in a steady rhythm, and then force your left hand to catch up to your right hand. Don't, don't stop your right hand and make it wait for your left hand. Force your left hand to stay with your right hand. Use a metronome, strum with good steady rhythm. And eventually the left hand comes around, you train the fingers to make the moves from chord to chord, and everything sounds nice and smooth. But you've already established your good rhythm, and that's really, to me, the most important thing. Okay, all right, so uh, that concludes uh, this lesson. Now looking ahead, we're gonna we're going to stay with C major chords, but we're going to learn the full C, G7, and G chords. And then I'm going to present to you the five string F chord. And then we'll, uh, we'll have a, a few more chord pairs. And then I'm going to uh, show you full chord progressions in the key of C. And it'll start to sound a little more musical. Practice, uh, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.